Basics Part 1 Theory. Welcome back everybody. I am Prakash Pradhan, your trainer for this entire series. In today's topic, we are going to continue with the further sum of the basic cubic statements that was left out comparing to our previous session. So in our previous session, we saw some of the basic statements that we are using uh, while writing a program in cubic. Now in this part, we are going to go a bit further in order to understand some of the other basic cubic statements as per the theory understanding. And then of course, we are going to have the practical implementation as well. So if any one of you have missed out the day five video, I suggest you to go through that without which some of the students here, you know, some of the statements, I mean to say that you are going to miss it. So that's why I suggest you to first go through the day five videos, then only you go for the day six part one theories. Now, without wasting your most time, now let's start today some of the basic statements in the basic that we're going to use it. So the first statement for today we're going to use as a basic statement of basic will be the tab statement. Now, you might have noticed that whenever we write a program in QBasic, it's going to execute it in a first row, first column. That means by default cursor is positioned in a first row, first column. So what about if you wanted to execute something in a certain distance? That means you would like to skip certain columns. In that case, we need to use a tab statement. That means tab statement is used along with the print statement to display data starting from the specified column in a line. That means whenever you execute any data, the data will display from the first row, first column. So if you wanted to move your cursor position to the sum of the right hand side, in that case, we'll be using a statement called tab statement. So if you have a look to the syntax, it says that tab and n, where the n stands for integer value. So if you have a look to this program, it said that, you know, it's saying that a dollar is equals to school, b dollar is equals to science. Now, when I get executed this data, I've written print a dollar. So the execution of a dollar will be in first row, first column. After that, I have given tab 20. That means it will count the column number 20 and the value of B dollar will get executed. That means in spite of printing in the same line, there will be certain gaps in between two words. So that was the concept of using tab. So I repeat again, the main purpose of tab statement is to position your cursor in user specified column number of first row so that you can give your data output in certain gap. Now the next important statement that we have as a basic statement of this Q basic that's a SPC itself. So it is also used with the help of print statement and this one will also help you to move the, your cursor or the print position to a user specified column number which might sound like similar to your tab but in fact it is not. Why? You see this statement, what it's trying to say. Number of spaces in a current line from the last character of the previous data. That means when you execute any word from that position of the ending character of that position, it will skip the next number of columns. So that's why it has said over here, syntax is already given species n, where n refers to the number of spaces to be skipped. So if I see this example, I have given print welcome. So the word welcome will get printed as it is in the first row and first column. After that, I have given SPC 20. So what it is going to do now, it's going to skip the 20 spaces after printing this data and then it's going to execute your data, leaving a gap for the 20 spaces or the 20 columns and the word computer will get printed. Though it sounds like, you know, it looks like same, but I hope you understood the difference between SPC and the tab. Now the next important statement that is mostly used in QBasic is the locate statement. Locate statement is actually used to move a cursor in a user specified row and column over the screen, on the screen. That means whenever you use uh, your tab and SPC, what it does, it will position your cursor and user specified column number. But the column number will be the by default the first row column number. So in that case, you might not be satisfied sometime in order to execute your data in certain pattern. So that's why to overcome that some of the, you know, Weak points of your tab and space, we do have a locate statement. So what it does, locate statement will help you to position your cursor in user specified row and column number. So if you have a look to the syntax, it says that locate row column, where row means the row number where you'd like to position your cursor and the column itself means it is going to position your cursor in certain this particular row and particular column number so if you have a look to this example at the right hand side what it is doing it has printed the first sentence that means first row first column it's okay it will get printed in a first row first column as it is 
but after that what we did we use a locate statement what it does now before the next statement is going to be executed it will position your cursor in a row number 10 row number 10 column number 10 that means your data will not get executed just right after the first row first column the statement that we have executed over here so what it does before the word welcome is going to be executed your cursor will position in a row number 10 column number 10 that means 10th rows 10th column will be occupied in order to execute our data welcome now why do we need to use this kind of statement of course these kind of statements are used to execute some so any kind of data in a pattern that means if you'd like to display some some data in a uh, some string data in a pattern in some design format in that case only locate will help you actually otherwise it will get displayed in a first row a certain column but if you like to go to the certain pattern in that case the locate is going to help you a lot okay now the next and last for this today's session in order to make the theory is that read and data statement if you remember that whenever we use a late statement the late statement is used to assign a value into a variable that means when I use let a is equals to 20 immediately implicit declaration of variable will be done over there. That means as soon as I write let a it is going to expect you to supply a value immediately that value will get stored in a variable a. But apart from that we do have other provision that means we do have other ways to declare a variable and the value stored on it and that is the power of read data statement. So the read data statement is used to assign one or more data to a list of variables separately all at a time. That means rather than declaring a variable and value instantly, what we can do over here is that we can first assign a variable and the data type and the data can be assigned later on. So that is possible only with the help of read data. But don't forget read data works together. You cannot say that I would like to use read and data I don't want to use or I would like to use the data and read I don't want to use. No, that's not possible because they work together. So how does it work? Read statement in read data will simply read the data that's been declared by the statement data itself. If you see a program sample over here, you might have noticed that the flow of the sequence of program in QBasic is top to bottom. Of course, we all know that. But sometimes we have certain statement that is going to violate this rule to meet your need actually. Okay. Now, if you see the first line CLS, of course, in this example, then I did read PTR. So what is the meaning of that? We are declaring multiple variable at first along with the data type that we are supposed to use. Since the symbols are not used, I do remember that we have already discussed in a first video of this QBasic regarding the variable and its types and the suffix. If you have missed out, please, please, please go through that. Okay. Now, so read PTR, that means by default, it's going to accept as a integer variable. And as soon as I go to third line, simple interest or SI is equals to P into T into R divide 100. You might be thinking there is no value for PTR, so it's going to execute as zero. Trust me, it is not that. Why? When we talk about the read data, as soon as you declare a read and write certain variable, the value assigned to this variable will go in search automatically that is assigned by your keyword data. That means as soon as I write read PTR, it will go in search of data rather than executing line number three. It will straight away go to the second last line. It will read the value. Then it comes back and assign those values to PTR and then it will flow to line number three. So by the time I come to line number three, the values for PTR are already read. That means 200, 310 is already assigned. So that means 300 into 10, into 3, into 10, divide by 100 will be done. And it will show you the simple interest. Okay. We will come across so many circumstances, so many situations. Okay. So many scenario in QBasic programming where first we are supposed to declare a variable and data will come later on. Okay, so I do believe these uh, basically uh, most commonly used statements of the second part is clear to you. In our next session, we are going to see the practical implementation of all of these keywords. Okay, and I do believe these are going to help you a lot. If you find it fruitful, please do like and subscribe. Thank you.